On today's episode, we talk about Romeo and Julieta and the eight things we can learn from these star-crossed lovers. Hello everyone, today we're talking about Shakespeare's incredible play, Romeo and Julieta, something that's cut through the last 500 years, it's constantly revisited, whether it's movies, cartoons, popular songs and literature. <coughs> There's a reason why this is so deep, and we're going to go through it today. So as always, we're going to begin with a quote, and that quote is, For never was a story more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo. Shakespeare, 1567. So this is a story of woe, but this is a story of love, and there's something really important about understanding the connection between deep, crazy love and deep, crazy tragedy, which um, Einstein, Einstein was Shakespeare, who is the Einstein literature, really delved into during this play that he wrote. So Roman and Juliet's tragedy, written by my homeboy, your homeboy Shakespeare, early in his career, about two star-crossed lovers whose death ultimately reconciled their feuding families in 1567. So. What are these eight ways? What are these eight impacts that Romeo and Juliet can have on us that we can really, you know, use this literature? Because remember, art is always designed to grow people. It's designed to challenge the status quo and to have us look at ourselves. So what's the number one? Well, things fall apart and tend to shatter. I'm going to give this one to the roots from their amazing roots in Erica Badu's song. Things fall apart and tend to shatter. We need to understand there's fragility to everything. You know, this, this life will end. Love affairs will end. And when they end, sometimes end big time and there's going to be a little bit of pain however if we know that then we can go on to things with our eyes open and know that ultimately this roller coaster ride called life isn't just straight up there's going to be peaks troughs and turns Two, listening to the outside noise Romeo and Juliet the challenge they have is they have this love that they know is fundamentally sound and correct but they listen to so much noise they listen to the expectations of their families and the people around them and it ends in tragedy because they can't live up to the expectations of those individuals those two feuding families who don't want those two individuals to be together the dust chatter which which is used in philosophy, German philosophers, the chatter, the noise, you know, the media, the people around you, don't listen to it. Your heart always has the answer. Three, understanding love is more than words. What's in a name, and I've got a quote here from the great bard, what's in a name that which we call a rose by any other word would smell as sweet. I remember I had a, um, a wonderful woman in my life who would always say to me, there's no point talking about this because words will never explain it. And she was so right. You know, when you're talking about how you feel about someone, you're really just giving it a go. You know, you're skimming the top level. It's so much more deeper. And that's something that Romeo and Juliet, Juliet teaches us. We need to read this play to get a glimpse into love. I mean, let alone a word, we're talking about a whole play just to give us an understanding of that type of love. It's a very deep, complex fabric. You should never judge other people's love, whether they be gay, straight, you know, whatever the situation is. If two people love each other, trying to see through the filter of language is really, really painful and not a great way to go. Four, go wisely and go slowly. Those who rush, stumble and fall, from Romeo and Juliet. Yes. When you're getting into a relationship, it's so important to begin slowly for two reasons. One, because that's the best period, right? So you don't want to rush it. You want to make sure you really get the juice out of those incredible first years. And secondly, the slower you go, the less you commit to things that may have short-term emotions leading to long-term consequences. I know that personally I've been um, guilty of this. I've got into relationships too quick overwhelmed by you know, those emotions, only to later to realise there's maybe compatibility issues. Number five, don't wait for a tragedy. So, spoiler alert, but the houses, the um, families that were feuding after the death of Romeo and Juliet who commit suicide ultimately because they feel that they can't have their love reunite and say that under this great tragedy they come back together and realise they were just squabbling over petty things that have led to the deaths of a young girl and a young man. But we don't need to wait for tragedy. We need to understand that when we stop people from loving or we stop ourselves from loving, it always ends in tragedy. When we don't understand, when we take sides and we fight, it always ends in tragedy. Don't wait for the tragedy. Love unconditionally now. Six, love can make you crazy. Understand that 
the chemical addiction that goes on in your brain when you're in love is similar to cocaine. However, cocaine doesn't last weeks, love does, and it can make you crazy. And it's really important to just know that, to know that when you're in love, you're gonna make some silly decisions, not be so hard on yourself, but also protect yourself from making big long-term decisions that you commit to when you're under that spell. Seven, we all have a deep lead to love. That's what Romeo and Juliet teach us, that no matter it's a tragedy, no matter it's a cautionary tale, at the end of the day, people love that story. They love thinking about love because we all have a deep need to be loved. Now, that need can only be fulfilled ultimately by self-love. The love that you have experiencing with other people's are brief, momentary experiences where they look onto you with love and you look onto them with love. But it doesn't last because self-love is the only love. How can you make a relationship of love last? Is both of you loving yourselves and coming together to give. Then you can create a long-term relationship of love. And number eight, infatuation can consume you. Infatuation and love are two completely different things. And to explain, infatuation is that early stage where you just want to eat them, rip them to shreds, and then later on that changes into more bonding, caring, and that second stage is the long-term stage. You cannot maintain infatuation. Infatuation will consume you if you let it. You'll do stupid things. You'll push them away. you become so needy and need to get your text messages replied to in a few minutes or need that photo or need them to respond to this or that or to treat you in a certain way. It will consume you. Understand that. Be really self -com be compassionate to yourself. And when someone's in love with you, be compassionate with them because that infatuation can consume them. And we can be all perhaps help ourselves along the way without making too many big decisions and judging each other too harshly when we're in that stage. Love, incredible. Romeo and Juliet, what an incredible story to illustrate to us timeless, timeless lessons. Too often we look to Kim Kardashian and Kanye West for answers on life, but really there's been a lot of great information come through in the stories of William Shakespeare that can help us understand the world a little bit better. Romeo and Juliet, definitely, if you haven't read it, you should read it. Something to think about. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Until then, goodbye.